Hello, welcome back to the Hallian 6 tutorial video series and we're discussing wavetable synthesis. Today we're going to talk about the spectrum editor. Well, first things first, we've got some blue bars and some orange bars. The blue stuff are your, your harmonics. So these are the individual harmonics that comprise the sound in this wave. The orange bars are the phase of that individual harmonic. Now this is sound design cranked to 11. So we are examining an individual wave in a wavetable of up to 256 waves. And we're now looking at every single harmonic inside that wave. And so we see them all here. We have this zoom control and if I zoom out all the way, that's the entire that's the entire wave. There's not much useful editing you can do at this level. So typically, when you start wanting to manipulate uh, individual harmonics, you need to go to at least eight times, I think. So we've got some controls over here. This one says Draw Tool. This is pretty straightforward. Any harmonic that we click on. We're going to reset and can you see how dramatically it changed the wave these harmonics down at the base are the fundamental harmonics of the of the wave these are the ones that are defining the tone the tonal characteristic of the sound now any sound is made up of any sound beyond the sine wave is made up of multiple waves and you have a, a fundamental which is the lowest note you have harmonics of that uh, fundamental which are exact multiples. And then you have overtones, which are tones that are not directly related to the fundamental because sounds in nature have multiple fundamentals and each one of those fundamentals in turn has its own harmonic sequence. And so we can identify which harmonics belong to which fundamental from inside this screen. If we go to the arrow selection tool and double click on any individual note. Now, when we zoom out, this is about as far as we can go. I think you can see all of the orange highlighted notes. Zoom in a bit. Are overtones of the original fundamental. We go on and on and on and just keep getting higher and higher. And obviously, as you get up into the upper frequencies, these things are, I mean, that's at minus 52 dB there. That is really very quiet indeed. So there are multiple independent harmonic se series within this complex wave. I'll go back to my draw tool just for now. So if I click on this bar and go up and down, you can see the wave reshaping itself. Now, if I'm kind of looking at you and just not quite paying attention, I've just strayed into the wrong zone and now I'm editing multiple things and now it's all gone horribly wrong. If I hold the shift key down and click, now when I look at you, you know, I'm only editing a single harmonic. So that constrains you to a single harmonic. I suppose we should really hear this thing because you, you'll hear it changing tone. Really quite dramatically. If I hold the Alt key down and drag, see it's drawing a line. Don't forget, these are harmonics. This is not some kind of ramp wave. These are individual harmonics. Now, if you think that's voodoo, that is absolutely nothing compared with the orange bars. This is the phase. So what we're dealing with here is the is the position of that harmonic within the overall scheme of the wave and this is where my brain kind of melts out of my ears 
First of all, let's just do some editing of the phase and see the shape of the wave change really dramatically just by altering the phase of individual harmonics we're dramatically altering the sound of the wave itself I just think about this I'm not altering the harmonic content of this wave one iota and yet I'm changing its sound how can that be well if you think about every single one of these harmonics is a sine wave that's what a harmonic is that sine wave begins at some point on its curve the phase determines where on that curve it's played I had to diagram somewhere so when I come across interesting concepts in sound I keep notes this is my master document which I'll go through one day there's tons of interesting stuff in here and this is the note that I made when I did a little bit of reading on phase and this tells you at zero degrees phase you're here on the sine wave and here you are at 90 there's 180 and finally we get round to 360 which is the same as zero and you're back to where you started with so when we say the wave is in 90 degrees uh, phase position it means that when you press the key when that note starts sounding it starts sounding from this position onwards you're going to hear a sine wave you're going to hear that until you get back to this point again it doesn't matter where on the wave you start you're always going to hear a sine wave now then it does matter where you are on the wave if there's other sound going on at the same time because every single sine wave that's played interacts with all of the others the concept of constructive and destructive interference is what makes sound sound it's what makes any wave a wave and it's the interaction between these sine waves that generates complex waves so the phase is fundamentally important to the overall tone even though each individual sine wave doesn't give a damn where in its phase it's played but we're dealing with individual harmonics here so if this particular harmonic is at 127 degrees phase it means when the note begins playing it will begin playing from somewhere around here and that's different if that's going to then interact with other waves and have constructive and destructive interference that's going to have a different effect on the overall sound than if it was at 90 or 0 or anywhere else so just because you're not editing the harmonics of the tone itself the reason why the wave shape changes when we change these these um, phase bars the, the shape of the wave itself is fundamentally changing because of the interaction between all of the harmonics now actually understanding and making sense of this with short of just kind of clicking it in it randomly and, and having some fun is beyond me you know this is where the limit of my mathematical understanding of sound stops but I at least understand the concept and it's awesome the selection tool allows us to do on mass selection stuff so draw a box pick the box up scale the notes scale them to the right scale them to the left stretch them squash them if I hold the control key down and drag this middle one create a bell curve is this not just the most awesome thing you've ever seen I mean holy cow Steinberg are you absolutely kidding me the level of detail that they've gone into in these editors is just by holding the alt key down 
I can individually edit overtones within the selection zone. Typically, without the Alt key held down, I'm, I have a selection tool that I can hold Alt down to do individual edits within that zone. Go back to my Draw tool, um, hold Control down, I zero harmonics. If I Control Shift, click, I delete all the harmonics. <laughs> Killed my wave. Sad that there's no undo feature. So now that I've killed my wave, I'll move on to a new wave. If I have all harmonics selected, goes without saying, I can select just odd harmonics or just even harmonics. And all of that operates within the context of the selection tool as well. That's the spectral editor dealt with. And at this point, we've analyzed the crap out of the Wavetable engine itself. And we'll start having a look at it more holistically in terms of how we actually incorporate this into our program, into our zone, and get some usable sounds out of it. Hope you'll join me for the next video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you then.